Well, hello. My name is, like I said, Philip Chow, Rice Engineering. We're a company working in the aggregates market and the corning side market. We are a privately owned business over 40 years worth of experience working in this sector. And we provide design, fabrication, installation services. And we have actually now got a couple of products specific to that sector, as well as other sectors. As I said, we're over, sorry, 30 odd years worth of experience. We're privately owned by one owner, a guy called Stuart Wright, but he started this back in 1986 with his brother working in the area for various companies doing metal bashing and installation works, all by word of mouth, I have to be honest. This business basically started with about 25 guys, half a million pound turnover. As of today, as you can see, well, it says 2018, apologies, this hasn't been updated. We are, and unfortunately, everybody's been affected by last year with COVID. We're around about 12, 12 million pounds at this moment in time. And working in the, I said, the aggregates quarrying sector, but also the power sector. We're also working in the um, HS2, building HS2. So the work we do, like I said, is design, fabrication, installation works, and very much all the work we do is seamless across all those sectors of industries. And as you were working in the aggregates market or the quarry side, we have to be a VESA. So we're definitely a VESA. We're ISO 9001. And as time has gone on, we're also a C mark business providing one, two, and three categories in fabrication. We do all the work ourselves. The people that we have on, on site are all ourselves. And basically, we only subcontract things per se, like the galvanization when we fabricate things. Everything else is done by our own internal business base that works up. We only have two facilities that works up. And that's our headquarters as well. And that's where we do all our main fabrication. But our guys, in terms of site work, they all work all around the United Kingdom. Uh, and actually, at this moment in time, even with COVID, as you may be aware, we are still very, very busy. Construction is the main focus until obviously the rest of the country works and moves forward with that. We have other sister companies regarding uh, the business. I sit for under Wright Engineering. The company sits under a now group called Wright Group. And the other businesses in there are one, a medical occupational health company called MediWright a company called Wright Demolition, which is basically a company looking after equipment, say rock breakers, things to do with uh, spares of that, but also they also look after what I said, we have a product called the Locker Feeder, which is well known around the world of uh, the quarrying side. It's been there since the 1970s, an American product, but we took it over about four years ago from a company called Rotex. And as an example, John Ross's company, Signal to Birch, they have these locker feeders. Basically, it's a vibrating pan feeder feeding to a conveyor belt from a silo. And it's also used outside the aggregate sector. We also have an IT business as part of our, our company too, which does all our IT business and we sell that service for other companies too. As you can see, we're very much obviously the heavy industries uh, doing all the fabrication works. We do all things from turnkey plant solutions to purely just one-off fabrications. Either we will design it or we'll do it to a client specification. And we also do minor assembly works within our, within our business too. These are just some of the examples of where we're working in particular sectors. Like I said, the quarrying sector, the building product sector, people like ETEX, we work for British Gypsum, energy companies like SSE, we also do things for people like EDF, recycling companies, we're obviously working with the main uh, EF, uh, recycling business like Veolia, Suez, directly and indirectly, and utility companies. We do a small amount in there, we do a bit of work for Thames Water and some other water companies, again though via some uh, other in contractor people. We are very much a family orientated business, which Stuart, uh, who's the CEO of the company, always wanted to ensure and maintain, even though we've grown from 25 guys to over 120 guys. We're very keen to have people come into the business to train them up. His, his philosophy is not to subcontract any business out and also to use agency people. 
in the non far distant past he used subcontractors and agency staff before but unfortunately it made our sort of projects become very very poor in terms of its delivery so from now on everybody that we use are our own people so you can imagine as a business that does fabrication installation work and on-site work it, it can be a bit of a headache to maintain that momentum of workflow uh, but that's part of my job as part of the sales department to ensure that we look at new projects, having associations with, with companies like yourselves to maintain the site people, but also the fabrication side. Like I said, we're ISO 9001. Uh, we follow all main accreditations to do with anything required in all the sectors we work. A veteran, obviously, particularly with the, with the uh, engineering side to do with the quarrying side. But for example, on the renewable sector, we have to follow other lines per se, like HS2, where we're doing now quite a considerable amount of work. They use construction line, which you guys probably are aware. It's an online uh, uh, attainment to ensure that companies can look at you, all the pre-qualifications done, and then accept you as a bona fide subcontracting company. Health and safety is very important to us. Like I said, we do our online, but also our own personal health screening. You're probably aware that's very, very important to ensure nobody is under the influence of drug and alcohol, uh, but also to ensure that people are fully fit, able to do their particular roles. And we'll also sell this as, as a particular element to other companies. And obviously by doing this, it enables your personal liability insurances, which obviously we have, uh, to be able to be acceptable and not to be exorbitant. And it's becoming more and more, regardless if you're working in heavy industry, light industry, or even the commercial world, occupational health is, is quite topical. Site installation, this is just giving you some sort of examples of one particular project we were doing on a renewable facility. We're very apt at doing that sort of work, either putting in our particular fabrication work, but also we're very apt to doing things like third party installation works. Even though we don't make that equipment, we're very, very skilled at doing the installation of that type of equipment. Uh, for example, in the aggregates quarry market, we've done things like crusher installs, we've done uh, screen installations, we've done a whole gamut of other plants per se, like uh, we put in mil uh, kil uh, kilns in for particular quarry companies. We obviously are not a process engineering company per se. We will put the plant in as per an installation plan. And then obviously a propriety plant supplier would then do the commissioning. These are just a few examples of some of the big projects we've done uh, all around Freddie Bridge, uh, Tullis, Tullis Russell, uh, Runcorn. We've done a large EFW project there. ETEX near Ferry Bridge, a very large product manufacturer of gypsum and that sort of product. And there's a name there you may come across or not heard of a French company called Kinim, who's a heavily main EPC contractor working in the renewables EFW market where we do an awful lot of work for. This is one of uh, pictures of one of the fabrications we kind of kind of do an example of that doing what we do in our particular workshop. And again, it gives you an example of what our capability in terms of what we have in terms of workshops. We have two, uh, not just the one. And obviously we're able to do up to about 50 tons, but that actually has increased. As I said, this uh, presentation is a little bit old. About 50 tons is between 50 to 80 tons of work at the moment. QA is very, very important. It's absolutely paramount that we deliver everything to that correct specification. As I said, we do things up to execution class three on the CE side, and we have all the required paperwork for our clients who need to be able to be supplied with fabrications. Our experience goes from a huge amount of different types of fabrications. The thing being, like I said, we will make things bespoke to client specifications. We will design them for clients. One of the most common things we do, you may see that in that list is ladders and hand railing. That's become very much a bread and butter pudding type uh, fabrication installation package. Every time we do things like a plant or we build a conveyor system, 
it requires basically the information for us to provide that because you need to have access to maintain the equipment. So we actually do that as very much a day-to-day -day thing. We, like I said, we do pre-assembly and we have an assembly part of our facilities and workshop. So we can do pre-assembly, we can do initial factory acceptance testing uh, because one of our main products, albeit it's not a catalog product, we design and build conveyor systems, again, for the aggregates market. This is just to give an example of how big our facility is really, in all honesty, that it allows us to do this sort of work. And this is particularly a picture showing a large duck which we fabricated and then assembled it within the workshop there. One of the other experiences we kind of do, which is also quite relevant to area of your particular market, we do a thing called a control cabin. And actually we sell this again as part of our capability. It's required when people do say they need a new control cabin. So we can design and build one and install that for a client when you need it on a particular facility. So that's something that's quite out of it. And one of the things it's also mentioned there, one of our other aspects within the business is that we're a materials handling company providing solutions like conveyors, feeders, hoppers, silos, whatever the solution required or needs to be resolved, we can provide that kind of uh, solution to you. Project management, that's part of what we do when we take on certain projects or do mini projects. We are very much adapt to do that. We have dedicated project managers assigned to particular projects Again, fully aware of what the job is. They will ensure they will run the guys on the particular job and report to the client, making sure the client is fully aware of what we're doing and dealing with a particular project. Like I said, just reiterating, all of our work's mainly in-house. We're very much aware of what we do in terms of the quality and also providing after sales to our people, to our clients at the end of the day. So in packages, just reiterate again, looking at detailed projecting, obviously we use Microsoft planning, whatever the planning skills required to provide the client the information to know when the project starts to when it finishes and ensure that it fits within their particular programs of work. We're also very adaptable in terms of just doing lifting or providing banksmen and slingsmen. Uh, one or two particular projects, we were tasked purely to provide qualified personnel to provide lift plans and also the craneage to do those lifts. Uh, you're probably aware there's a lot of guys that just purely do that, but we do get asked that as a particular aspect to our business too. Thank you. What's your forecast looking like? You know, uh, are, are we? Uh, are you? Are you? Are you thinking there's going to be a recession, or are we going to keep storming on as busy as we are? I have to be honest. Um, I think obviously when lockdown last year happened everybody basically didn't know what was going to be the situation and we obviously initially shut everything off we did furlough people uh like everybody else when that first lockdown started to uh kind of change slightly and then we knew where everything was going and i think the government was obviously very keen to ensure some work was being done and obviously our prime minister was going on about construction that basically kind of lit uh everything back into normality we obviously sell i assume like everybody else the world going off a cliff but ever since then we have actually been a very stable continuous growth of doing work and business hs2 is one of those the renewable sector the aggregate sector and the quarrying sector that's all actually still progressing in a very very positive way so in terms of what we kind of lost maybe in the two, three months of last year, we've gained uh, and now we're still carrying on. And, and like I said, hopefully that's a good indication. I believe that's a, a similar situation to some other companies. I think there's still wariness because obviously we're now in our third lockdown. Uh, people can say, are we not going to go back to where we were? I have to be honest in construction, as you guys are aware, because of COVID, we have uh, specific SOPs regarding how we work on site. I have them when I go to visit a client, albeit I'm not seeing many people. Um, I do see people, I've got meetings with people on a one-to-one -one basis, uh, probably once or twice a week. A lot of it's on video calls like this, uh, but in reality, the work's been done, it'll take longer, and our clients understand that. 
the one problem, as you may be aware, we're a main fabricator as of today as well, and it's been highlighted in the news again, the steel prices certainly are affecting or will affect how things progress. A, the shortages, and the price of steel is really absorbent. Uh, so when we do quotations, our validitations are uh, nowhere near what they're going to be at the moment. They may be three or four days, or we'll negotiate with a client what the validity is going to be because it's such a volatile market at the moment. Yeah, as a question back to you all, I mean, how have you guys seen your particular uh, businesses at, as we speak since obviously we're now hopefully locking out for the last time and carrying on as kind of normal as we possibly can at the end of the day? And obviously there are constraints with the uh, with the COVID situation, but um, surprisingly we uh, we are operating uh, pretty normally, if I'm honest, um, with with the sectors that we deal with, um, water sectors and mineral sectors that have all been running through. And actually in the second lockdown, uh, certainly the construction business has picked up as well. Yeah, I mean to be honest, as I said, it, it's a good thing. Construction is the only real positive sector i can see at this moment in time and that's just your sector it's outside of that sector too and obviously hs2 will demand on the the quarrying and agorist market obviously but there's other projects out there that will have the, the same implication too so um i'm not saying uh, it's perfectly safe but it's a good good positive situation at the moment